everybody, it's Alexa, and I'm back with another Con Marie video. This one has been so long in the making. It's the photo process, and I want to share with you an overall view of what I've learned. I realized that I've made a lot of photo uh, videos as I've gone through the process, but now I really see the end is in sight. Um, and I've basically finished. I, I can see there's more decluttering to do, but actually so close. So I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm finished. So let's go through the 10 points that I have learned from the KonMari method about decluttering photos. Okay, so the first point I want to make is what KonMari says, what Marie Kondo says, which is leave it for last. So as you go through the process, starting with the easiest stuff, the clothes and the books, um, you're going to find photos. And as you go through this whole process, in my case, it's been over a year, um, you are going to consistently find mementos and photos as you sort of go deeper and deeper <laughs> into your stuff. And depending on how long you've been in your house, I've been in my house for this this year it will be 20 years so that's a long time to be in one place plus I'm from here so I've got all kinds of stuff I've got plants I have a plant that I had when I was a child okay that's the kind of person I am it's still alive so let's start with the first point uh, leave it for last I did just said that didn't I yeah so have I said that enough leave it for last let me tell you why, and this is what, I was just learning this, I'm in a, I'm in a spring cleaning kind of a mood, and I'm in a kind of like, let's get all the crap out of my life mood, um, and what I realize is that I, as Con Marie says, I'm actually finally getting to be good at letting go, and so uh, yesterday I was in the basement, I'm going to make another video showing what, you, what I was doing in the basement, um, I got rid of so much, um, you know, so many mementos and cards. I found floppy disks. I found computer disks that, um, you know, they were the little floppies. Not that old. Uh, but anyway, they were, I think they were from when I was a teenager um, or young adult. I don't know. You know, yeah, there's probably genius work on there, but I will never know. And so farewell to those things. So that was point number one. Did I say that was point number one? Yes, I did. Point number two. Con Marie says, put everything in an album. Now, I understand what she's saying. She's saying, don't store things. So I've gotten that. Uh, that's abundantly clear from both of her books. Don't store things. But um, I'm going to disagree a little bit on putting things in albums, and I'll tell you why. If you're not a person who looks at albums, then um, putting things into albums is a little bit pointless. However, if you are going to put them in albums, put them in the kind with sleeves so that um, they don't get yucky. Okay. Instead of albums, consider boxes. So I really loved these little boxes that I got at uh, Ikea. And um, these ones are kind of big. I also had these boxes I've had for many years. This guy right here. Um, so let's look at one, one of these boxes. So what we're going to find in this box is I went to Dollar Store and I got these little photo guys. This 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 particular little album is Home Improvement. So that's kind of cute. So like like when we first moved into our house and Home Improvement. High school and my brothers and my family, stuff like that. This one is still empty. Um, it's more Home Improvement. But then what happens is you'll see I actually cut down, and I'm going to make this look nicer, but this is just the first step. Anyway, or, or I won't make it look nicer, but I don't know if you can see it. But I cut down um, just regular tabbed manila folders to fit this box. And that way I can just see what these things are. Here's another little thing idea that I had, which I thought was kind of clever. So I decluttered uh, quite a few albums, as I said, that I wasn't looking at. And, and some of them were nice albums, you know. Some of them were the, the sleeve kind. Well, this is an example of one of them. And you know what I realized is... I just, I, I got rid of all the pictures I didn't care about. Now, this is Peru, Machu Picchu, so I, I kept that picture. So I want to show you uh, some of the albums that I got rid of, like this one. I made this in high school. I made it myself. And, uh, you know, it's the typical thing where it's all yellowed and it was falling out. And there were pictures, once again, applying the spark joy um, method. Why, why keep around a picture of an acquaintance that you don't even... You've never seen it again. This is the baby album that we put together for our first child. Again, I took the pictures out of it, and actually, I was able to declutter a lot of them. 
And then I kept them in these, I actually kept them in the same uh, holders that they were in, in the big album, but they take up so much less space, right? Because again, we're not going through these pictures looking at them all the time, but at least they're still safe and they're in there. So you can just go through and uh, keep them in the holders, but uh, fold it up. So those are in this uh, bin right here, which still needs a little bit of work. I had to go down to the basement because this girl got into my boxes and was knocking over all of my Christmas decorations that I'm going to give away. And these are little uh, stickies that I'm using to define the categories. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the stickies with these nice, um, well, they're just not nice, but the index cards that I found. And I'm going to, you know, write the category on the top in my beautiful penmanship. And then um, replace the stickies um, with those. But I'm also going to go through these categories one more time because, like I said, as, as the end has become, uh, as I've gotten closer to the end, I have decluttered a ton more. Like, this is my recycling bin. This whole bin was filled with photos in envelopes. So to reiterate, one was leave it for last. Number two was reconsider albums and declutter the albums that don't spark joy. I had kind of a perfectionist vision at one point of all these beautiful matching albums. But albums are kind of expensive and, you know, of dubious quality. So instead, I went with a couple different solutions, including photo boxes, one nice album from Michael's, folding up the sleeves from the insides of the albums and putting them in photo boxes, and finally, the little uh, photo mini albums that come from uh, the dollar store. Tip number three. I'm, I made a video of this process, but... Right over there, that's my photo wall. I discovered from doing this process that I don't really spend time looking at albums, um, and uh, you know I didn't feel the need to create a library of photo albums, but rather integrate the photos into our lives. And trust me, I looked up on Pinterest. I looked everywhere. There, there's really a dearth of creative ideas, I believe, for what to do with photos. Um, but an advantage of getting away from albums and getting into a filing method like what I'm doing is if you decide to scan everything, you're going to want things accessible rather than locked away in albums. A lot of people have mentioned it's important to label photos, and I haven't gone through that too much. Um, but it's true that um, at some point, you know, you don't want to leave your descendants a box of photos that um, nobody has any idea who they are. Yet another culprit, this girl, is making a lot of noise, so she's going to go up. Okay, one was leave it. For last two was reconsider the albums and look into photo boxes. Number three was the photo wall. And number four, I want to share you, with you a couple of the projects that I did thanks to uh, following the Conroy method. Again, I went to the dollar store uh, and I have been collecting these uh, photos from photo booths at the fair for many, many years. So I've always envisioned having like a time-lapse thing. And so I finally got it done. Actually, it goes the other way. Obviously, this does not, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So honestly, this represents a period of years that is longer than 14 years. I won't tell you how many, but rest assured it is significantly longer than that. And um, But anyway, I finally got them in a frame, and um, I'm happy with, with how it turned out, and the frames were just a dollar. You know, the, the, the dollar store frames are very flimsy, but having gone through this process, I actually realized that um, you should really consider your frames to be like a fashion thing, in which case um, flimsy is not always bad because you may change your mind. Plus, they're very lightweight, I like that, and you know, they get the job done. I wanna say I'm like nine or 10 or something like that. It's one of my favorite photos of myself. And again, dollar store, super duper cheapo frame, and I, I like the silver frame. It goes with the other silver frame. I'm kind of, I'm realizing that stylistically I'm moving more towards silver or black and kind of away from wooden frames. Point number five was exactly that. Reconsider expensive frames and go with dollar store frames where possible. Um, and also try to have some consistency in frames. We've got a lot of different styles of frames and it kind of annoys me. 
but at the same time, I'm not going to go nuts right now and reframe everything. Point number six, especially as you are moving away from some of the reconsidering what sparks joy and what does not, um, if you have big photos that you do want to keep, they spark joy, but maybe you don't want them on your walls anymore, um, cut down those oversized photos. So this is a vintage um, letter storage box. I had three of these that I bought many years ago from some sort of a thrift store and or antique store. And so, you know, here's an example. This was a really big photo, and I just, you know, I, was, I didn't have to go too far, but I just cut it down a little bit so it would fit in this box. And um, this box contains... Um, it could probably go through a little bit more, but I've actually reduced a lot of what's in these boxes, too. Um, so it contains um, random photos that are of various sizes that aren't going to fit in the photo boxes. I'd like to recover these boxes in some sort of matching material, um, but I haven't gotten to that yet. Number seven, so this is a wedding album, and we didn't have a wedding album. We had a wedding video, but not an album. So um, anyway... Um, and it also got, uh, I realized just now looking at it, that I actually have a huge amount of space in the end of this. So I will probably go through, these are like early pictures before we got married. So I think I'll, I'll throw those in there as well. Um, and this came from Michael's. Um, I, I, I definitely like um, albums that let you put a picture on the front. To declutter all the frames and only keep those that spark joy. Um, that also goes with albums. So this is, this is an album that I'm decluttering that's in perfectly good condition. Um, this is our giant um, baby album for our first son that is also in good condition. I'm going to give that to Goodwill. I don't need it anymore. And it always was annoying how, you know, it was a dust magnet and it took up too much space. Um, and then, like I said, these are all frames. They're in perfectly good condition. Well, maybe a little dusty. But um, I'm giving these all to Goodwill. Point nine is consider how photos themselves um, affect your decor and consider keeping your surfaces more clean. So one thing that I had done, and this is in another of my photo videos, is that I put the photos um, in this dining room cabinet. And so you can see um, they're in there. Point number 10 is uh, use the sleeves from within the photo albums themselves to organize and you can just keep the photos that you want so definitely declutter take out everything that doesn't spark joy and then put them inside um, boxes storage boxes so I wanted to talk about what I've learned from this process people nowadays you know with the smartphones I mean we all say this right that we all look like um, tourists now because we're all constantly documenting our lives and taking pictures of everything and I read a or I heard a really good um, argument about um, Facebook and Instagram, and they were saying Facebook is um, dependent on FOMO, fear of missing out, and that's sort of the mechanism that keeps people checking back into Facebook, what's happening, what's going on. And um, Instagram is fear of missing the moment. And so with Instagram, it's all about, oh, I gotta capture this moment, I gotta document it and put it on Instagram. But what I discovered is, going through all of our photos, is we actually did take a ton of random pictures of everything. So it was kind of fun. It was fun to see, you know, we took pictures of our dogs, we took pictures of silly moments in the house, um, making funny faces, funny expressions. So we definitely did actually take a lot of pictures of, of everything. Um, and, of course, um, beyond this video, the whole digital side, you know, we, like everybody else in the world um, who now has a smartphone, um, you know, we take a ton of pictures with the smartphone. So, you know, that's a topic for a future discussion. I also realized that when I was younger, um, I often looked horrible. I saw these pictures of myself with my coworkers. I'm just like, what am I wearing? I have this weird, like, red knitted cap on that like sticks up like like an elf cap or something and then I have this big scarf on that my husband gave me that it was actually it was a nice scarf that he got from Gap it was like all these different colors but it's like really long so it goes down to like past my knees then I have like a sweatshirt on again it was a sweatshirt that my husband got me that I really loved um and then I have these jeans on but they're like too short and then I have like these weird orthopedic shoes on that perhaps were the fashion I don't know but um, why didn't anybody tell me how bad I looked? And conversely, so, so on the one hand, I'm like, why didn't anybody tell me how bad I looked? And then on the other hand, I look at some of these pictures of myself, and I'm like, oh, my God. I was so beautiful, and nobody ever told me that. Like, nobody ever said, oh, look how beautiful you are. And so I actually use that for my own 
mentality because I'm like, you know, like many women, right? I'm critical of how I look. And, um, and then I remind myself, uh, you know, I look back at something and I remind myself that mentally at that time, I thought I looked horrible. And I look back at it and I'm like, oh my God, I, I looked really beautiful and young and vibrant. And why was I tripping? You know, I think it's actually probably more of a good thing to not spend too much time thinking how beautiful you are. When you go back and you edit your photos and what you have, you can also sort of rectify mistakes and sort of recalibrate like what you want to express about yourself, your family, your goals, and that's gonna change, you know? The, the example that I'm thinking of is, there were no pictures of my younger son compared to my older son, and my older son, there's like too many pictures, like pictures we don't even want anymore. I could show you this one picture. Um, I mean, a giant, my husband would take him to like the mall to the special photo people and, you know, get some like four foot tall, you know, fake canvas picture of my son, and it's like, my first, our first son, and then our second child, you know, he didn't have any pictures. Of course, I mean, he did have pictures, but they just weren't printed out. So one thing that I did do is that I found some really adorable pictures of my son and um, printed them out, or, or in the case of the ones that were already printed out, I framed them. And so both of my kids now are prominently displayed. In a related vein, when I was going through photos yesterday, I found a really cool picture of my younger son from school. And I never get the school pictures and, um, this one is adorable, and so I went on this website. I was just curious, because this picture is from um, like four or five years ago. I was able to put the photo ID number in there, and it's there. So I'm tempted to buy it. It's a little bit expensive, $30 for like a five by seven. I think I've learned my lesson not to get bigger than five by seven, like eight by 10 or something like that. That's another thing I've learned from this process. Careful with those big old photos, because big photos, you know, at some point you're gonna be like tired of them. Um, that leads to my final point. Um, which again is the KonMari genius. You keep what sparks joy and you learn to let go and you give everything thanks for coming into your life, um, but you don't need to keep it all in your house. The more I do this, the more I am able to just go choo 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 and get rid of the photos. Obviously it's been like a long iterative process because you keep on going through and finding more that you can get rid of, but you also find some real gems that are beautiful and it gives you a good perspective on life. I want to reiterate that other point that I put in my review of the Spark Joy book, which is that your belongings are not infinite. Love that. And other people have commented how useful that is. So I feel like I'm getting towards the end of the finite number of my belongings. And certainly going through photos has been, has been great. And I really feel like, wow, I can finally get this bin off the living room floor where it's been for like eight months and put these things you know on shelves in these cute little boxes they look really cute and move on so i hope this has been helpful let me know what you've done with your photo decluttering and um if you're done and how it's changed your life so please comment and subscribe and thanks for watching bye